Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a tutorial on how to play PlayStation 2 games on a PC using the PCSX2 PlayStation 2 emulator. This is the only PlayStation 2 emulator I've found that really works simply. There's 2,433 playable games. So, uh, yeah, yeah, if you can get better than that, then congratulations. Anyway, um, I'll shut up and we'll get on with it. So the first thing which I would recommend doing is just having a folder on your desktop like I do here called PS2 Games, in which I keep, um, I've got a folder with the PS2 BIOS, we'll get to that later, and uh, some games. Um, some games come in BIN and Q files apparently, and some come in ISO files. Um, We'll get to the BIOS later, that games to get is nothing important, that's just me reminding myself of games that I should probably get. So then, after you've got that simple organisation, just leave that somewhere simple, you can go to the, just Google, see so yeah, I'll just close that and sh just show you how easy it is, PCSX2, done, top one, PCSX2, PlayStation 2 emulator, I've gone into news, don't really matter, download, get PCSX2 here. Then you're either going to want, this tutorial is for Windows, Windows 10, um, not sure if that makes much difference, but Windows 10. Uh, so I'm clicking Windows, then I want the standalone installer. This is just the latest version, I think. Well, I don't want any beta versions, I just, if there is a beta version, just go with the stable one. There we go, that is almost done now. I'm not going to do one of those tutorials where I say, oh, I'm not going to install this because I've already got it, because that's just pointless. You're not really showing us then, are you? You're just telling us. Anyway, so we want the PCSX2 1.4. I don't want to start menu shortcut. I do want to desk... Oh, no, I do. And I'll get those two things, because apparently I need them. Default folder, perfect. There we go, that shouldn't take long to install. As you can see, I've already just got a thing on my desktop. Almost finished now, and um, there we go, complete. Just whack close, and it's down here. Now, if you open that, you get your first time configuration. This is where some of this stuff will come in. Um, the language selector, you just, well, I'm going to use my system default, which is English, United Kingdom, or just English, I don't really know. System default, apply. I'm not sure you really need to press apply. This will talk you through it, these configuration guides, I didn't really read them, I just went with default stuff, or oh, existing, okay, uh, just, you know, what have I done, oh, okay, ah, that was because I had some existing settings for my plugins to get the graphics working properly, just kind of ignore that, this is the screen you'll get next, you can choose which plugin you want, um, like for the, this is for the video, this is for a controller, this is to actually, I think, oh, this is sound, that's to read the ISOs, or the, I'm not sure if you can actually put discs in your DVD drive, I think you might be able to, and those things, USB, Firewire, and Dev9 are just, there's only one, they're important. You can configure them here, but what I like to do is just have the game open and just kind of fiddle around with it, and uh, then I know what I'm, I can see the effect that what I'm fiddling with is having. Um, next, so we need to select a BIOS ROM. Now, with this, if you have a PlayStation 2, because it says here, it requires a legal copy of the PS2 in order to run games. You cannot use a copy obtained from a friend or the internet. That is not strictly true. You can use a copy obtained from a friend or the internet. Uh, because getting it from your own PlayStation 2 console is a complete and utter pain in the ass. Um, excuse my language there, but um, it is. So if you want, what I did personally is I did using some software, and as there's other tutorials on YouTube that will tell you how to get your BIOS from your PlayStation 2 console. And if you have a PlayStation 2 console, do that. The only reason. I'm, the only reason I'm not playing on my PlayStation 2 console is because it stopped working. Um, it just doesn't output any footage no matter what I do. But the BIOS on it is still intact, so I use that. Um, if you don't have a PS2, then there's probably websites or other tutorials which will link you to a 
BIOS you can download, but I am not going to link you to a BIOS you can download purely because I don't want to be redistributing something that's copyrighted. I'm fairly certain that is illegal. So you can probably find one of them on the internet somewhere. And uh, so now I need to find my BIOS. It's telling me stuff I never knew about my console. Um, you might say something different, like what version of the BIOS it is or something like that. But that is mine. So then you hit finish. And then that is your first time setup done. This is every time you open the program, ta-da, the interface you'll get. So, uh, fiddling about with settings, um, you can fiddle about with these to get it quite working how you want. What I've done is I had to fiddle with the video because I was playing Ratchet and Clank and it, everything was rendering wrong. So, uh, what I've found is that if something renders wrong, uh, don't use these ones that say hardware after them. Use the software ones. And also, uh, I turned up the amount of rendering threads from one to two. Any more than two, and it lags quite badly. So that's that's like this is how I recommend it. That seems to work for me for most games. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe it's just my graphics card. My 960 doesn't want to work for it, or like if you had the Titan X or something, for example, it might work. I don't really know. Um, emulation settings, you can just leave most of these settings default. Um, and uh, then you're going to want to go to the memory cards. Now, this is an important bit. Uh, I have two memory cards already called Dave and Kenneth. Uh, what you need to do... Um, is you just add a couple of memory card, like you'll have PS2 ports, these are virtual memory card ports and uh, what you'll need to do is create a new memory card I recommend going with 8 megabytes, that was the standard Sony provisioned size and uh, make sure that's ticked, just my memory card default name .ps2 so there we go, in my unused cards bit I've got a my memory card .ps2 PS2. So now I can insert it, and I can choose what virtual memory card port I want to ins put it into. But I so like well, I will just show you. For example, put it into that one. There we go. So it's taken Kenneth out, and it's put my memory card in. And now this is an important bit. What you're going to want to do. See, notice how this is formatted, and that is formatted. Try to boot up a game. It will not work. Your memory card needs to be formatted. Well, you won't be able to save. Is what I mean. So um, let's just go into system, boot, uh, what game have we got running? I think it'll be Ratchet and Clank 2, probably. Oh no, we don't want a game, do we? We want no disc. So make sure that in C D V D this is how you, you choose what you run. So here are some games, you select your ISO. ISO is play a game, no disc is to get to the kind of PlayStation 2 normal interface. There we go, let me just turn that down so that I don't get deafened. And um, then you get into this. You'll probably then realise spamming some various mouse key button things doesn't work. So that's a problem you've come across there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the virtual system. Then what you're going to want to do is go into configure, controllers... Plugin settings, go into pad one. There we go. So, um, what you're going to want to do, just for example, press triangle and then press what you want to be triangle. Press circle, then press what you want to be circle and stuff like that to configure your controller. All these bits down here, like big motor, small motor, and motor, motor, and uh, force feedback effects, just leave by default. Once you've whacked all them in, click apply and you're done. So, then if you boot up the uh, C D V D again. When I boot it up I always make sure to uh, click full, not um fast. Just I don't know, I think it might load better and stop glitching out. So then we're gonna want to go into browser, I think. Not entirely sure. Yes, here we go. So memory card one. If we have a look at memory card one. Okay, I've accidentally pressed back instead of enter, haven't I? Because the controls are all messed up when you're in this default interface. So we go into this one. We can see all my save data. Uh, 
So um, that's on my memory card one. If I go back and then I go into memory card two, it's unformatted. Do you wish to format it? Remember, this is the virtual one that we just created and plugged in before sorting out our controller. No, unformatted. Do you wish to format it? Yes, we do. There we go. Formatting completed. But there's no data on it. So let's go back. Back. And then we can just happily go up here and close this window. That doesn't actually close it. Because you can then just put, go into system and press resume. And then you'll get straight back to where you were. To actually close it, you need to shut down. And then we go into CDVD. ISO selector. Um, oh no, we need to tick. Well, this is where you get to games. This is the bit now. Because you've got... Uh, your controller configured by going into the uh, controller's plugin settings. Um, you've got your video configured by, well, just copy what I had. Uh, you've got your BIOS, and now you've got your memory cards formatted. So what you're going to want to do now is get some games. You're going to want to boot up your browser of choice and go get some games. Now, I think if you have them on actual discs, um, you can do something with them, like, I, I'm not sure if you can just put them in your DVD drive and it'll load them, or mount them, or something like that. But the far, far easier thing to do is just go to, I think it's MU Power Dice, or something like that. There we go, this is the good one that I use. Because you get absolutely tons of stuff on here, so um, if we go into ROMs, ISO, and Games... And then you go, well, they've got a bunch of things, but um, where is the Sony PlayStation 2? Now you can just search for them by the alphabet. So if I wanted Formula 1 2006, I just press F and then I scroll down till I get to Formula 1 06. Um, very simple. And then once, say, I was going to get that one, I would just click... Um, well, I'd just click it and then I'd uh, scroll down, download, and then download. And it would start downloading. But I don't want that game at the moment, so I'm just going to cancel that. Anyway, once you've got those games, as I've got this in my PS2 games folder, you just whack them in a folder somewhere and keep them. I've got The Simpsons here in one, Action Clank, Action Clank 2, and Lego Star Wars 1. I've also got a list of games to get, as I said earlier. Um, now what I'm going to do is hit CDVD, ISO selector, oh no, I need to make sure it's put on ISO, then ISO selector, browse, PS2 games, and here they are. So say we want Ratchet and Clank, the first one, then we're just going to hit that, open, and then it's going to be selected, Ratchet and Clank. So then if we boot this up again, I'm going to be deafened again. Oh, no, I'm not going to be deafened again. It's turned down this time. What a nice PlayStation. And here we go. We are loading up Ratchet and Clank. Um, so that's about it, really. Um, you've got your controller configured, your memory cards configured, your settings configured. If your video or audio settings don't work for you, just try fiddling around with them. And, um, yeah, it's amazing. You can now just play PS2 games on a virtual PS2, on your PC. It does lag a little bit, but come on, you're running an old console on your um, PC. What do you really expect? It's not going to be perfect, is it? So um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, see you next time. Goodbye.